As a 36-year-old female, I've been on birth control for at least 10 years, if not mm. more. And when I had to switch over to a progesterone only oral contraceptive, boom, in like two months, I have dark, if I didn't have makeup on, <laughs> you'd yeah. see dark splotches all along here. I wanted to create this series all about hormones because I personally have been struggling with my own for a few years now. And by being pushy, asking a lot of questions and seeing a lot of specialists, I've learned so much. But I wanted you to learn from it too so that you don't have to go through what I did. And that's where the idea for this series was born. Now, in order for you to understand my situation, I'm gonna have to take you back a couple of years to the Christmas of 2018. Now, Sean and I were headed back to Washington, which is where we are right now, to visit my family for the holidays. And the day before my flight, my mom called me. And just like anything, I assumed she was telling me to make sure I packed an extra jacket or bring this or that. But she actually called to tell me that my grandmother had been rushed to the hospital because she had had a series of small strokes. She didn't know much more than that at the time, but we quickly learned that my grandmother was gonna make a full recovery, thank God. However, she did have to have surgery on her carotid artery, that's the one in your neck, to clear out, clear it all out because she has what is called Leiden Factor V, which I'm sure you're not familiar with, and it's really just a blood clotting disorder caused by a mutation of the protein in the blood. The surgery goes great, and my grandma is released on Christmas Day. Now, Sean and I go to pick her up, and her doctor asks if I'm a blood relative of hers. And when I tell him that I'm her granddaughter, he asks if I've been tested for Leiden Factor V. Well, I, I hadn't. And he is extremely shocked and worried and tells me to do it immediately. Now I'm gonna be completely honest with you here. I didn't do it right away. I was 35 at the time and I hadn't had any issues and I was kind of scared to even know. Ignorance is bliss, right? Well, not really. And so about eight months later, I go in for my yearly physical, which you all should do, and I ask to be tested for it. And it turns out that I am a carrier of the Leiden Factor V, but I still needed to be cautious and make some changes. And one of those was stopping birth control. One of the warnings associated with taking an estrogen-based birth control is that it increases your risk of stroke meaning that birth control can already cause our blood to be hypercoagulable, or in non-medical speak, more likely to clot. So I immediately made an appointment to see my gynecologist. When I share the results of my blood test with her, she is also scared for me and recommends that we try a progesterone-only contraceptive. I make the switch from a low est estrogen birth control to a progesterone-only one, and well, it, it didn't go great for me. I started to feel on edge, not myself. And even Sean started to notice and ask what was wrong. I even went down a rabbit hole of why someone should go off birth control and the history behind the creation and its relation to relationship to PMDD, PMS, acne, and of course, mental health issues. It's, it's very common uh, in females, and this is something that we see and we treat all the time. Usually I would start just by taking a history and getting a better idea of what precipitated this and what else uh, you have going on with your skin. Yeah, okay. Have you tried any treatments yet for the melasma? No, nothing. The, the alpha hydroxy thing yeah. was like my first attempt to just like force cellular turnover. Uh -huh. I don't really know what I'm doing. I just, one of my girlfriends was like, oh, it really helped me with like just getting rid of age spots and stuff. So that's why I started that. So if it's inflammatory and it's, it's a response, you know, if you pigment because you're in the sun, you have UV rays, then you want to... Stay out of the sun. Stay out of the sun. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, most of it is a lot of common sense. Stay out of the sun. Use a physical blocker. That's one thing that we're really big on here in our office is that you want professionals taking care of your skin. Yeah. You know, this is something we do every day. I, I see patients, my esthetician, Joe, she's very accomplished. Uh, you'll be seeing her at some point to go over some skincare regimens. Um, our, our physician's assistant, Brittany, our nurse, Trisha, we work with skin all day. And we know the latest research, we know the latest products. And for example, like the alpha hydroxy acids that you're using, they're probably making it worse. Oh. Because melasma is a, uh, usually it's, it's thought to be some type of inflammatory response. 
it's ironic because as a mental health professional, I'm always telling people, don't diagnose yourself. <laughs> Take your symptoms into someone. Exactly. <laughs> and then here I am just be like talking to my friends and be like, I'll buy that product. We'll try this out. Yeah, give it a shot, right? <laughs> well, there's a difference. You know, that's again, when you go to a doctor's office who treats skincare, it's a totally different thing. We understand the structure, the anatomy of the skin, and that every patient's different. And mm -hmm. when you come into a plastic surgeon's office, a dermatologist's office, we're going to treat everything about your skin, not just push a product on you. And that's, I don't think you get that when you go to the med spa. And, you know, certainly if you are, uh, if you're just getting a product from your sister or your friend, it may not be the right thing for you. It's, it's something to try. And the people on Instagram generally don't know what they're selling, <laughs> just selling a product. You know? Yeah. It's, I mean, the most of it is a lot of common sense. Stay out of the sun. Use a physical blocker sunscreen, mm -hmm. titanium or zinc. Uh, if you are going to be in the sun, it's, I love the sun too, but I always wear a hat when I go outside. Yeah. You know, I've got a lot of real estate up here. And, <laughs> so is my husband. <laughs> yeah. So he's got to get a nice wide rim careful. hat. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. So wear a hat. But at the same time, if it's an inflammatory response, you want to avoid a hat that's going to rub on your forehead. You want to avoid a hat that's going to hold the uh, moisture in or hold the heat in because you want oh, that to dissipate. Okay. Even, even sunglasses. You know, aviator, wire rim sunglasses are very popular. That's what I have. Shit. <laughs> you want to get, get a nice pair of plastic rim sunglasses. Okay. It's less reflective. Instead of instead of reflecting the UV, it's going to block the or block the UV rays. Okay. Good, good things I didn't know. Yeah, basic okay. stuff. Basic yeah. stuff. Well, you mentioned before that you were wearing perfume. Mm -hmm. uh, believe it or not, perfume can actually have kind of a phototoxic reaction. Really? Yeah. And and what the perfume does is your body becomes sensitized to it, and as it becomes sensitized to it, it can actually irritate your skin. So many irritants. So well, it's all it's all sunglasses, about, yeah. Sunglasses, <laughs> perfume. perfume, scented lotions, I tightening know. serums. What do you think about melasma? A lot of things. So melasma and hormones. What what is the relationship between melasma and estrogen? Mm -hmm. uh, estrogen causes an increased production of melanin. Melanin is the pigment that deposits in your skin oh. and causes the the dark spots. Okay. So people who usually uh, experience melasma are pregnant women. Mm -hmm. Very common. Uh, women on birth control pills. Or anybody uh, sometimes are taking estrogen supplements or mm -hmm. just additional estrogen. That's when you typically see it. Most of the time, uh, it is sentry facial, so it's around your face, your forehead. Yeah, friends. My, a lot of my friends have had kids have mm -hmm. it in their forehead, right Very up by common. the hairline. Sometimes we see a malar pattern mm -hmm. where it's on the cheeks and the nose. That's me. Yep, and it tends to kind of break down to two types. There's the 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 type that has like a precipitating cause. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, you just changed birth control or you're recently pregnant. It pops up, tends to fade, and then there's a type that is a little bit more persistent, where it's been there for a while, you've tried a couple of treatments, it doesn't really go away. And then, of course, the, um, the sunscreen we talked about. Mm -hmm. And then as far as your skincare regimen goes, you want to avoid skincare products that are going to cause inflammation. Okay. So alpha hydroxy acids, mm -hmm. I mean, that's not where you want to go right off the bat. Okay. Um, typically, we would start with some type of, some type of topical treatment. Uh, all the topical treatments for melasma are geared at blocking the production of melanin at some point in the hormone synthesis process. Okay. So, you know, when, when, it, when, a, when melanin is being produced, when any hormone in your body is being produced, there's multiple different points. It's a pathway. And so it's like you can block it here, you can block it here, you can block it here. So all different treatments are geared at different points in the pathways. And there's been a lot of research on this. And the most common starting point is usually combination therapy. Okay. So we would try a combination therapy, something along the lines of a, uh, there's usually a little bit of steroid in it. There's okay. a little bit of hydroxychloroquine uh, or hydroxyquinone and then often a retinoid. Okay. I've heard of retinoids. Yes. Okay. Retinoids, uh, they, they have a couple different... Uh, it's like anti-aging, I've always thought. Yeah, to a certain no degree. I if that's the truth. <laughs> well, it helps, it helps thin, thin, the, thin the layer of the skin, increase cell okay. turnover, gotcha. which is what you want. You want to get rid of the you want to get rid of the outer layer. You want to get rid of the pigmented cells. Yeah. Uh, but each of, these, each of these treatments will help arrest the development of melanin at some point in the cycle, which should theoretically slow down the production of melanin and help your skin. So obviously, it's not a dangerous skin condition. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not going to kill you, but it does affect your quality of life. Yeah. And there, there is plenty of research about how it's damaging to self-esteem mm -hmm. and uh, your outlook. Like everybody else, I think I've asked a lot of friends and watched a lot of things on Instagram to figure out what products I thought would be good. And these are like expensive and things I thought I was doing to make my skin better. And you all know how much I love my like cocoa stick. And, and this is even something dermatologists recommend. And I had saved up 
to buy these sunglasses that are metal framed and I thought they were fancy and nice and I liked them and I had no idea that maybe this could be the culprit and what caused my melasma or is it birth control? So let's talk to an OBGYN and see what she has to say and learn a little more. Could my birth control have led to me getting melasma? Because m my story, the way that it kind of worked is I found out that I was a Leiden factor five carrier. I don't have the full mutation of the gene, but birth control can increase, you know, the possibility of me having a blood clot. And since that's super scary, my uh, hematologist recommended that if possible for me to go off birth control or to switch birth controls. And when I went from, I was on orthotricycline low for many years, happy, pleased, no problem. Then I switched to Generous Fay for like a year, I want to say, and I'm probably saying the name wrong. Um, but then when I went into my OB, she was like, okay, well, we'll have to switch you to a progesterone only because I, I believe it's the estrogen component that makes it more blood clottable, if that's a word. And, and then that's when my melasma was like, poof, it came out, which was shocking to me. And so I was just curious if birth control can affect our skin or if you've heard people, I know I've heard people like with their acne going away and things like that, but how does that work? Yeah, so these are the acne and, and what you're referring to are kind of two different processes. But okay. for those who don't know, melasma is basically hyperpigmentation of certain areas of the skin. And it is distinctly recognizable on the face and it's hormonally induced in a lot of cases. A lot of people will notice it kind of above mm -hmm. the upper lip here and also here. kind of like right mm -hmm. around here. And mm -hmm. yeah, forehead is another place. It can also be worsened by the sun. So one thing you can do with melasma, if it's not too bad, is just make sure you're wearing a really good SPF every day. But if it's hormonally induced, this is from, we tend, you know, it's interesting that you said it got worse on the progesterone only because we kind of tend to think about estrogen as kind of pushing that forward as well. But regardless, it's a mixture of both estrogen and progesterone that kind of triggers an increase in melanin production in certain areas of the skin. And I will not be the one that can tell you exactly why it happens in the places that it happens, but it is hormonally related. The acne side is generally, if somebody has hormonally triggered acne, it will be improved on a birth control pill because birth control pills that have estrogen and progesterone increase a um, hormone called sex hormone binding globulin, which basically goes through your bloodstream and finds the testosterone that's active and kind of stops it from being active. One of the places that it's active is at the skin level. And so a lot of people oh. will see an improvement in their acne. The progesterone only doesn't do that to quite the same extent. So some people will actually notice worsening of acne on a progesterone only birth control. And then it's always really important to say some acne is not hormonally triggered. And so every type of acne will not improve on a birth control pill. And some of it can be exacerbated, but I would say 80 to 90% of people will see an improvement of acne on a combined birth control pill. It's interesting to learn that it sounds like my melasma may not have been caused by my changes in birth control because from what Dr. Jones was saying, it sounds like they know estrogen to be responsible for melasma, not progesterone, because progesterone is what the birth control I switched into was like a progesterone only type. So I don't know, it's just really interesting. And sometimes I think, you know, when I do research online for things that I'm dealing with personally, it's kind of like confirmation bias. Like I already have an idea of what I'm, I'm sure caused it. And so I search things according to that. And then I find answers that only confirm what I already thought. They don't challenge me to see things in a different way. And I think that's why it's really important that we see professionals, people who have gone to school and deal with this all day long because then they can give us the real information. And that's also why I wanted to talk to Dr. Hirsch, who's a plastic surgeon, because he deals with skin all day long. And I'm sure many of you are wondering, well, Katie, why didn't you pick a dermatologist? Like, why are you seeing a plastic surgeon? Well, the truth is I did see my dermatologist and I asked him about it because I get my moles checked every year as we all should. But when I brought up my issue with melasma, his response was, well, you know, it's fine. It's not affecting your health. There's no real reason that you should worry about it. Just get yourself some good concealer and just cover it up and wear sunscreen. That was all he told me. And while it doesn't affect my physical health, it definitely affects my mental health. I don't like how it looks. I've been very uncomfortable. I feel like I need to wear makeup, which I don't like doing. And so 
I wanted to better understand how to fix it. And that's why we have to advocate for ourselves. And that's why I reached out to Dr. Hirsch to ask more questions about my skin and what he knows about it and how we can maybe, hopefully, make it better. The treatments for melasma, uh, they're kind of broken down into two different groups. And then, there are, of course, a third. The, the simplest thing is avoid things that are...